What's up guys, back again with another r slash pro revenge, the undisputed king of reddit. Today, we got another three juicy stories for us to sink our teeth into. First, we got a greedy girl who's just using our OP for some free fancy food and drinks, and the genius way he gets her back with the help of a twin. Next, we have a horrible father who disowns his own children, so he ends up without a home and wife. And finally, we have a greedy family who only cares about the will of their dying sister. And of course, we've got a great bonus plan for you at the end, so make sure you stick around for that as well. All right, enough talk, let's get it going. See you in a bit. Pretend that you like me to get taken out on expensive dates, I'll trick you into paying. So, this one might seem a bit tame for this subreddit, but hopefully you guys will still get a kick out of it. I'm new to the subreddit, and reddit in general, so I'd love to hear your feedback. Also, this is gonna be a long one, so hold on to your butts. For context, my family is in a very fortunate position financially, and I would describe myself as upper middle class. This story happened a few years ago when I was at university. It was a fairly small university, so many students live locally, in a generally very working class area. I also have a twin brother who goes to a different university nearby who has a small part to play in this story. I never really had much luck with dating due to some pretty niche interests and hobbies. So it was pretty hard to find people who I can relate and really click with. But I'd always get on and remain friends with people if things didn't work out. I ended up dating a few girls on the uni netball team. They all seemed nice, but it was clear we were not a great match. Because I stayed on good terms with everyone, I ended up spending a lot of time around the people I had previously dated, but just as friends. Consequently, most people on the netball team were familiar with me. Wait, most people on the team? My guy. Enter the greedy girl, GG. She was a bit of an outlier in the team and didn't speak much, so nobody knew much about her. One day, she comes up to me and asks me on a date. That was a nice surprise, as I'm normally the one asking, so I said yes, as I had no reason to dislike her at this point. After I say yes, we chat for a bit, and she keeps trying to shoehorn the conversation to the fact that she, like many others around here, doesn't have a lot of money. I didn't really think about it that much at the time, but in hindsight, it was obvious. To keep the story short, I won't explain the dates. I went on three before I realized how greedy she was. All you guys need to know is that I paid for everything on every date, but I didn't mind doing this. We normally went out on the weekends. One day, I went to the library to get some work done. The desks have tall partitions between them for independent work, but whispering was still allowed in this area. Over the partition in front of me, I hear Gigi's voice whispering to a friend. I begin to stand up to say hi, but stop myself to listen to the conversation just before my head emerged over the top. She was talking about me, calling me things like poshy idiot, but saying she was going to let me take her on a few more dates because I take her to fancy bars and bought her expensive drinks. I thought about it and realized that she had always gone for the most expensive drinks on our date so far. So I decided it was time for revenge. I left the library without being seen. A few days later, I actually saw her driving a brand new BMW Z4. So it was clear she was pretty damn rich herself. The best and fanciest bar in town was owned by my very best friend and her family. It was a small bar, but very high end with some of the drinks being over 15 pounds for a very small drink. Therefore, not many of the students went in, but if you were invited there on a date, it was a special one. I spoke to my friend whose family owned the bar and got her in on my plan for revenge, ensuring she would have my back if things went wrong. I was pretty paranoid about getting caught because I planned on tricking Gigi into paying for everything that night up to a total of the cost of all the previous dates combined, in excess of 250 pounds. To cover my tracks, I asked my twin brother if he wanted to go out with my friends to the pub, telling him my plan, and then I'd give him some money if he wanted to dress like me with his hair styled the same. I also told him to take plenty of pictures with my friends, so I had an alibi. The night of the date came around. The bar was busy, but we managed to get a table. I immediately lied to her, saying I'd forgotten my card. But if she paid, 
I could transfer her money later. She agreed. I had done this for real on the second date and paid her back as soon as I got home, so she knew I was reliable. I told her to stay sat down and save the table. While I went to order drinks and the biggest, fanciest tapas plate on the menu from the bar, my friend, pretending she didn't know me, as agreed, served me the drinks. Gigi seemed to be in disbelief of my generosity and pretended like she was on one of the best dates of her life. I also pretended to be enjoying it, continuing to buy expensive food and drinks until I had nearly spent the targeted $2.50 on her card. The dessert section of the bar's menu is titled Just Desserts. Finding this oddly appropriate for my revenge, I asked if she wanted her Just Desserts pointing at the menu. She laughed and said yes. So I went up once again to the bar with her card and ordered two super deluxe chocolate fudge cakes. I told my friend to keep one for herself for when her shift ends, and they could write, screw you, on top of GG's. The bar had candles with letters on it for birthdays, etc. I then returned to GG, handed her the card back, and told her I was going to the gents' bathroom. I left and never repaid the money, and went to join my mates and my brother at the pub. GG confronted me in front of the netball team a few days later, but I acted confused telling her I was out with my friends that night, and showed her the selfie my brother had taken with my mates. When she tried to argue with me, the entire netball team took my side and stopped speaking to her. GG has since left the netball team, and from what I can tell, I don't think she has many friends now. I had a fantastic night of revenge, with fine food and drinks at her expense. My friend got a fudge cake, my brother got some money, and all the lads got to go to the pub. All in all, I found it super satisfying, and everyone but GG was happy. Hope you guys enjoyed, and sorry it was a long one. I'm really impressed that he was able to hold all that in from the library to get that revenge. I really don't think I could have done the same, I might have just flipped out then and there. Disown two of your kids? Get ready for an awful divorce. First of all, I'd like to set up some background. I'm gay, 25 years old and I've been dating my boyfriend for three years, also 25, and he's great. I also like a lot of his family, which includes him, his oldest, his sister, who will be important later, and two other kids. Wow, that's a big family. I really like his family, except for one person, the dad. When I first met my significant other's parents, I was really confused. His mom, one of the kindest people I've met, while his dad is just awful. He disowned his first son when he came out at 18, leaving him to the streets. When I first met the father, he made it clear that he despised me for allowing his son to continue the path of sin. I was completely appalled. Fast forward to May of last year. My boyfriend tells me that his sister is pregnant at 18, and just like himself, the father disowned his own daughter because she got pregnant and has followed the path of sin he cannot forgive. She was devastated, as her baby daddy had just left her and she had nowhere to go. I make a good amount of money, and while I haven't had my boyfriend move in with me just yet, it's not that we don't want to, it's just financially beneficial, I decided to let her stay with me, at least until we got everything sorted out. She wants to not kill the baby, so we start looking for whoever will be willing to take the baby. Our search begins in June, and later that month, we found someone who's willing to take the baby. It was my boyfriend's mom. I questioned her, especially considering the fact that the father would hate taking care of a child born from sin. She told me that wouldn't be a problem. Apparently, wouldn't be a problem means divorce. She had gotten sick of her husband, who apparently lashed out at the presence of a gay son and a pregnant daughter with drinking and violence. She was the breadwinner of the family, which meant the dad was effing screwed at the sight of a divorce. The case began in August and ended in October, with the mom getting full custody of almost everything. The father was completely screwed, and I haven't heard from him recently. When I talked to the mom a few weeks after the divorce, she told me the situation with the sister made everything clear. And when it came to the boyfriend's excommunication, she was just too stressed with a job opportunity and couldn't defend her son. She 
and all four of the kids were glad that the father had finally left their lives. Speaking of which, the sister gave birth to her son on January 15th. His middle name is after my surname in honor of my assistance to both the mother of the child and the family as a whole. He is great, and I check in on him every now and then. His current guardian is going to allow the child to contact his biological mother when he's older. TLDR Father disowns two kids after revealing that they're gay slash pregnant. Mother sues hard. So I don't know the exact situation, so I'm trying not to be too critical of the mom, but I don't understand how she couldn't defend her son. No matter what's happening in your professional life or what have you, you always should make time to say, hey, look, we're not kicking our own son out of our house and just completely disowning him. That's just not right to me. Auntie's last minute will change. So I was just talking to my mom about this and I'm still chuckling about it. TLDR at the bottom. My aunt was diagnosed with an advanced form of leukemia back in February 2017 and passed away that following March. During that short time, she was making her final arrangements, final burial, her ceremony, and of course, her last will and testament. My mom helped out when she could. We lived in Houston and she lived in Dallas. My mom flew out every weekend till my aunt's passing. She helped manage the house, took care of my uncle, he had Alzheimer's and wasn't doing well either. This is important. The week before my aunt's passing, she told her lawyer that she wanted her half of the estate to be divided up amongst her family. She didn't have any children, but my uncle had a daughter from another marriage. So her stuff would basically be divided between her sisters. I kid you not, my aunt hasn't even passed away yet. And her sisters are already boxing what they want and packing it up to their cars. My mom loses her cool and starts yelling at everyone, calling them every name under the sun. My aunt's neighbors got involved saying, and I quote, Auntie told me that I could have the house since I helped her with uncle. A day passed and my uncle's daughter shows up. She's a wonderful person and I love her even though I've met her only a few times in my life. We'll call her Susie. She talks to my mom about what's going on. My mom explains about what's happened and Susie is pissed. She says she needs to make a call and she'll be back later. Days pass and my aunt dies. No one but my mom, my papa, my aunt's brother, my sister, and Susie show up to the actual funeral. Everyone else didn't show up until later that night. They were all shopping. The next day, it's time to read the will. My aunt's lawyer shows up and goes to the papers. One aunt asks, so who's getting what? My mom goes to stand up, basically to kill said aunt, but Susie grabs my mom's hand and simply says, wait. The lawyer reads, well, there's only one request here. All my belongings, my estate, bank account, car, everything is to be sold, and all the proceedings are to be used for nothing but the care of uncle and Susie is to be the caretaker of said uncle until his passing. Everyone sits in silence. Susie has the biggest F you smile on her face. Apparently, after my mom and Susie talked, Susie told my aunt what was happening. My aunt laughed and was like, call my lawyer. So they made some last minute changes to the will. Oh, and remember the neighbor I mentioned? Apparently, while everyone was too busy fighting, she sneaked into the house and stole the deed to the house. She is currently being investigated for an elder predator. My uncle ended up passing away in October 2017. On my sister's birthday of all days, my aunt Susie took whatever money that was left in the estate and donated it to my aunt and uncle's church. TLDR, dying aunt changed will at the last minute, so selfish sibling and neighbor get nothing. Uncle's daughter sells everything and takes care of uncle until he passes and donates whatever's left to the church. Selfish neighbor is being investigated as a predator. I must be reading too many pro revenge stories because I assumed Susie had an ulterior motive there at the end. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed those last few stories. Now like usual, let's switch gears and head right into the bonus section with r slash nice guys. Let's get it going. Hi. Do you have a boyfriend? No. 
Can I be your boyfriend? We can get to know each other better. No. Why? I'm nice. So you can't get to know each other better by, I don't know, talking? Or uh, being friends, perchance? No, you gotta date each other? Okay, fair enough. I'm sorry about this. Patrick voice incoming. Why don't we take all the nice girls and give them to the nice guys? And let them breed? Are you kidding me? That would be disaster for the world. You may be turned off by guys who are too nice because your triggers need drama. Yeah, this guy was shut down pretty hard recently. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of r slash pro revenge. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you again in the next one. Peace out.